love that intro every time. I can't get enough of it. Um, I am delighted to introduce uh, our guest this morning, Mike Skudnick, who is currently a realtor on the Bartos Group of Premier Plus Realty here in Southwest Florida. But why he is actually on the show today is what he did formerly as a commodities, futures, and options trader in Chicago with all the boards there, Chicago Board of Trade, Mercantile, and Options. Um, and Mike, I welcome you to the show. And as my guest, you get to give us the best really Mary you got. Really Mary? <laughs> and I think you've said that a few times. Yes. <laughs> Just like that. Um, anyway, the reason that uh, Mike and I were talking uh, recently, and although this is very relevant because of what we're walking through today with um, everything that's happening in the world, uh, we came through a financial crisis and then had a health crisis or back, <laughs> I don't know which one came first, the chicken or the egg, I think health and then financial and, you know, folks are really concerned about what's going to happen in the future. And with Mike's background, Mike can really give some insight to that because recently, Mike, we've heard a lot of things like, oh, my gosh, third quarter earnings are going to be really bad. So give him a little background. Tell him a little bit about you and then kind of start walking down that path. So as, as you've already mentioned, yes, I was a, a trader, uh, started out at the Chicago Board Options Exchange and then moved over to the Chicago Board of Trade and jumped in between the Chicago Board of Trade and the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, trading uh, futures, options, commodities. And um, uh, also got into real estate around that time and um, then eventually shifted from uh, trading full-time to real estate full-time. And that would have been my, let's say my first investment was uh, uh, 86. So 34 years ago, bought my first investment piece. Love that. Love that. Now, interesting enough, Mike, as you kind of have walked down that path, I mean, for those of you uh, that are old enough to remember, you know, trading places, Mike said that that's really not the best interpretation of what he did because uh, I'll let him tell you that. But really, Mike, tell him what you kind of fit into from a movie standpoint. Well, well trading places was interesting. And some of the things that happened in there, at least on the floor of the trading floor, that which is I was on the floor of all these exchanges, actually does happen. People, uh, the market opens up, it goes crazy. And then all of a sudden it goes silent, waiting for the number to come out on the ticker and then it goes crazy again. So that did happen in trading places. And then that did happen regularly on the exchanges. But I was telling you earlier, the better representation would have been Wolf of Wall Street. That would have been a better representation of the lifestyle uh, of a 20 something in the early 80s. <laughs> um, in fact, Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street mentions that he started trading on the day of the 87 crash, which was actually my first day of trading, was on the 1987 crash. And uh, I'd just gotten on a membership seat. And so that we have that in common. But yeah, so if you know Wolf of Wall Street, that's a great representation of 80s uh, activity for 20 somethings who are being paid too much. Uh, I've got a real visual there, and now you're you're a married, settled man with two little beautiful girls and a new little one on the way, and what a different lifestyle that you have. Totally different. Totally different. <laughs> well, moving from lifestyle to um, you know what's happening, you know, with our financials, with the stock market in general, um, you know, talk a little bit about that. And I hear that uh, as an objection from uh, a lot of uh, clients also. And, um, you know, the stock market's down. Well, and I say, well, which, you know, which stock market are you looking at? Because the stock market that I am in is up and it's up way above where it started before. It, and you were asking order of business. It was COVID and then the market uh, tanked. And the the broader market, let's say the S&P 500, is almost back to where it was, but we're still underneath the highs of March. Whereas if you look at, um, so I'm invested in tech ETFs, ex ex exchange traded funds that, that group together technology firms, that is way above 
the, um, the March highs before the COVID because of the shift that's occurring. And I know people throw shift around a lot, but the shift that's occurring in our world, people are going to the, what they call the fangs, uh, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, they're all moving to that because they're stuck in their homes. They got to order everything from Amazon. Uh, they're telling everybody about how uh, their life is going on Facebook. Uh, they're watching all the movies on Netflix uh, and they're constantly Googling the latest on the COVID. So those things are getting flooded. So if you're in the techs, uh, you're doing really well. Um, the same thing, we have the same shift in real estate. So I hear people calling me from up north, Illinois, New York, New Jersey, the market's terrible here. You know, so they, they, they paper that and say just, okay, it's terrible everywhere. Well, I say it depends on what you're in because the people who think it's terrible there who are selling things there, a lot of them are coming down towards us in Southwest Florida. My clients are all at this point, New Jersey, Illinois, uh, New York people. And um, after business started picking up, you know, we were dead from say March 15 to May 15. And in May 15, my business exploded, uh, pended over a dozen properties, the majority of them, the people had never seen. So I'm doing um, FaceTime walkthroughs with my iPhone on properties and they're writing the check. They just, they're, they're basically pulling forward their lives. They're, they were saying, okay, I'm going to retire in two years, three years, five years. And now they're saying, I'm done. Let's let's accelerate. So now we're getting a huge bump from that. Agreed. You know, Mike, you you bring up a, a point. Um, you, you threw out a, a number recently, and I was googling it to see how spot on you are. And as always, you are spot on. Um, the statistic of the number of people moving per day to Florida is nine oh six. So 900 plus people are moving every day into Florida for that very reason. Why hold off on our dreams when life is short? Maybe my grandkids can't see us on a regular basis. You know, I stay for them. They'll come down and see me here. I mean, aren't you seeing extended families really want to be together now that school is virtual? Why stay in the winter when you don't have to? Absolutely. And I, I, I know I threw out the number of thousands, so I was pretty close. It's nine, nine something. And, you know, then you compare, you, com you compound that with what I already mentioned of the pulling forward of these people's lives to get out of where they are sooner. Um, you compound that with uh, 20,000 baby boomers uh, retiring uh, every year. Um, and it just, it's a, it's a perfect storm for uh, people in Southwest Florida who want to help families either uh, buy uh, their retirement home or buy their family home or invest for them, help them invest in real estate. Maybe, maybe they don't want to get out of, uh, get back into the stock market. Maybe they've gotten out of that. They want to make a shift into real estate. Uh, I've a lot of clients like that. Just this last couple of months, one one couple bought three places: one that they're going to live in, and then two investment condos. Nice. So they they made a huge shift uh, from uh, stock market portfolio, uh, you know, out of that and into what's going to be their future. You know, they're gonna they're gonna live here six months a year, and they're gonna have their little um, baby condos, as I call them, uh, studios and one bedrooms. Uh, as their um, side job investment landlord uh, job. Nice. Dirt is always a great place to be in. You know, um, cash, people with cash. Talk about that because you're constantly behind you. You've got, you know, uh, TV listening to what's happening in the markets. Um, you always, know. Have, always have CNBC going and always have my, you know, my TD Ameritrade uh, account up to see where my techs are this morning. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry. The question was. Yeah. But you always tell me about bonds. You know, what's happening with cash? Where, where can I put cash and what kind of return do I have on that? Yeah. So, you know, the 10 the year treasury. So you're going to give the United States government your money for 10 years and they're going to pay you half of a percentage point. Uh, now, if you take even the subdued inflation that we have now, you're ending up with a negative return. And if you're not into 
that type of thing. It's just what you're getting returned minus the inflation rate. And so if you take the inflation rate away from a half a percentage point, you're losing money every year. Um, you can easily get into investment properties in Florida that would make at least 10 times what the 10 year treasury is making. And you would also have all the um, depreciation write-offs, the appreciation of the property and your personal usage of the property within you know, uh, federal tax guidelines. Love that. Now, let's factor in interest rates, right? We're at a historic low. You know, would you be buying properties for cash? Well, if it depends on your investment um, perspective. Um, um, rates are all time lows. When I mentioned I bought my first place in 86, I think my first mortgage I got was around nine and a half. The second mortgage I got was in the, around 13. So for someone to say 2.99, that's a bargain. In fact, <laughs> I'm, I'm pulling cash out of my investment properties right now to lock it in at that 299 to buy more. Um, but the question was cash or, or um, cash or borrow. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a personal preference, number one, and then it's an ability issue, number two, because there's some people who, let's say, um, were hurt in the financial crisis a long time ago, their credit still isn't back to normal, but they're earning money uh, and they have a nest egg. So they can use that cash to buy. If you have really good credit and you want to leverage, borrow the money because you're going to get a higher return on investment if, you, if you're leveraging the money to make the purchase. Definitely. So instead of putting $100,000 in, you're going to put maybe $20,000 and Correct. the return is higher on Correct. that $20,000 versus if you have all cash. You know, Mike, I loved also when we talked about, you know, third quarter earnings um, that people were afraid that, you know, after the third quarter last week specifically, um, you know, all this bad news was going to tank everything and we were going to go back down uh, into a financial crisis. Give us your thoughts on that. Obviously, the news is not good for the broader market. The only real good news out there is on the tech sector and um, little pockets of um, other stocks because they got a contract with this person or that person. And usually that is tech related. Um, but the, um, the earnings that are coming out, although they're poor, they're still beating what the analysts are saying it's going to be. So if they say it's going to be uh, 10 cents a share and it comes out 12 cents a share, well, that's a beat. So that, that's, that's a positive for the stock market. So if the analysts are saying it's going to be X and it's, it's X plus coming out, that's great news. Stock market's generally going to be up. Love that. Love that. Now, we talked a little bit about, you know, expectations of what's happening. The news is coming in pretty negative. You know, here at the Bartos Group, um, we helped over about 110, 115 families in the last three months. So from um, May 1st, through July 31st, which is, you know, amazing. Totally amazing. Just amazing. Uh, you know, one of the things that I noticed when I was preparing a housing um, report is that single family homes with a pool are way up. Our pendings are incredibly up on that type of property because Mike, we talked about what you're thinking, you know, what pulling away from folks. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I was telling you about the P's. It's not something that I made up. It, obviously, it's out there for people who are watching uh, investment shows, but it's it's the uh, the P's. It's uh, privacy, property, and pools. And people are obviously moving moving towards that. They're buying um, either homes in Southwest Florida with pools, uh, and they want a home maybe instead of a condo, gives them a little more privacy. Um, they're also buying um, acreage. We have uh, uh, a lot of acreage around in Southwest Florida that you can buy anywhere from you know two and a half acres to 12 and a half acres at a very reasonable uh, price, and then have your little compound there with you know your pool and 
whatever else. Uh, yeah, without called, a doubt. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's, that's the three P's privacy, property, pools that people are shifting to. That's another shift in our market. Well, and interesting that, you know, what we're seeing that in other markets, you know, some of the markets, you know, for example, outside of New York and New Jersey, uh, I happened to be on a panel with an agent that said, you know, these are brownstones, right? Where, you know, maybe three story living, maybe it's multiple levels, but the ones that are doing well, everybody seems to want that outside space um, because when they were stuck in their house, there was no place to go. Uh, I didn't feel that, you know, here in Southwest Florida that we were stuck. We could still get outside. We could still, you know, do things. Um, as a matter of fact, Mike, you might recall my, my twin boys turned 21. <laughs> I do recall. <laughs> we had a little party train that went from house to house, socially distanced, where the our team fed them drinks. I'm not sure how I agreed to that or set that up as a parent, but it was kind of a fun thing to do because we were still, I mean, it's what a horrible place to turn 21 when you can't go to a bar, right? So right. Terrible. <laughs> so we had, what, 15 bars set up for them. Yeah. But I'm not sure if it was quite that many. So again, I, now I, was, I was thinking towards the end of it, what was I thinking? Not a good idea. But, you know, that's just one of the things that we could do to, we could be outside. We could Ride bikes, um, bicycles have got to run on, right? I mean, from a standpoint of everybody wants one. Right. And I mean, we live right next to Mackle Park, which is a, the, a huge park in the center of the island. And I'm there during this crisis, I've been there almost every day with my daughters. And we, we walk around the park and we play on the playground or we uh, fly kites. We fly kites a lot, uh, play soccer, we play baseball. Um, so, that's very, very helpful in getting through this is to be able to get out with my daughters and not be cooped up in the house. Um, and it's the weather's beautiful. We were at the beach yesterday. Everyone was social distancing. Um, you know, it was it was great. You know, you can get yeah. outside. It's a beautiful place that we live. Whether we hopefully, God forbid, we go back into a lockdown or, you know, people are just just people are in general more weary. I, I think from you, your standpoint, you work out every day and you stopped going to the gym and brought your gym in one of your properties. Yeah, I was for, I don't know, 10 years at the YMCA pretty much every day on Marco Island, which is a, which is a beautiful, beautiful facility. But when this, when this hit, I just felt, you know, probably isn't a good idea to be going to the YMCA and, you know, sweating to the oldies with everybody. So I, uh, I, I, I bought a gym. I bought a um, full set of commercial equipment. Uh, my, my brother did the same thing. Um, and so now we just each have our own gym. Uh, I, um, one of my dearest friends from Chicago, Rocky, he's a uh, um, equipment dealer. So he delivered them to our houses. He even, he flew to Florida to set it up for me because uh, I think it was, uh, the delivery was like 1,500 pounds. So we had to, that, that took a little bit of moving for, you know, uh, Rocky and I, but uh, yeah, now I've got my own office set up with my own gym. Um, a lot of people like on the privacy, uh, uh, the three P's, are now doing a lot of that. A lot of people, obviously you can see from um, when you watch you know, Fox or CNBC or whatever you watch, a lot of the reporters are in their homes. A lot of people are shifting that and a lot of people are buying the, the Pelotons or, or whatever they like um, to have in their home because it, you know, it could be short term, but it could be forever, who knows? Not the, not the disease, the, the, the lifestyle. Right, for sure, the lifestyle. And we're getting people <clears throat> when, within Florida moving over, um, just like, you know, we're getting people from outside of Florida because with the ability and the desire of the consumer to work from home and the willingness of the corporation to let them do so, they can then get into their, you know, place where they want to be. And we are very, um, we're not a big city. You know, I came from the Chicagoland as well. 
traffic was 45 minutes or an hour and a half, depending on what time I left my house in the suburbs to get into the city, right? right. And then, you know, and reverse it the same. And you're walking shoulder to shoulder, you're taking a train, you're driving, whatever that is. Here, we're just more spread out and we do live that more casual lifestyle um, here. As a matter of fact, Mike, I do have to point out that your jacket is very amazing. And I want you to give a little twirl with the jacket and more importantly, the story. <laughs> the jacket, um, uh, basically, I uh, one of my college friends, my dear friend, uh, Terry Kane, TK, uh, lives up in Jacksonville. And he grew up on the North Shore of Chicago with the with the Murray brothers. And, and Bill Murray and his brothers have um, golf tournaments every year. One's in St. Augustine, Florida at the World Golf Hall of Fame. The other one's in Chicago. So they have two a year. It's been postponed a couple of times now. I think it's going to be April of 2021 is the next um, Caddyshack golf tournament. But they do have a they do have a crazy um, crazy outfit contest. I don't know what the official name is, but yeah, this is the kind of stuff that people wear to this event, and then you get you know you get judged and win a prize. And you know they have it's all it's all charity auction stuff, and they you know you're 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 partying with the Murray brothers and golfing with them all weekend long. It's, it's quite fantastic. Oh, you wanted to see the, uh, yeah, we gotta <laughs> see that. Yeah, yeah, that is amazing. I, I love it. We can't see your head right now, but that's okay. Cause we get to yeah. see it now, but the whole outfit has to come together. Yeah. So, Mike, it is always a pleasure to have you on um, doing a webinar or on the really Mary show because our customers and um, prospective customers really get a feel for the depth that we offer here at the Bartos Group. And I'm gonna put in a shameless plug for you. Mike obviously works great with investors. He works great with um, families. He works great with somebody that wants to come in and relocate. And he works great with a luxury market down to you know the small the small guys, the one um, the one. No efficiencies are one rumors, right? Right. Um, you, you really can do it all. And it's a matter of, you know, what the, you know, you, Mr. Buyer, Miss Buyer are looking to do um, when it comes down here. Lest we not say Mike is an excellent listing agent. Um, you know, if you're looking to sell your property and get somebody that can bring buyers in, you know, that's Mike. So we are sure delighted and um, just thrilled to have you at the Bartos Group, to have you as a resource for all the things um, real estate related. Thank you for all the compliments. <laughs> Tell everybody how they can reach you. Give them your phone number. I'm at area code 219-406-6482, 219-406-6482. I still have my old uh, Indiana number. <clears throat> of course you would. And we're going to put that below. Um, so make sure that you look at that. Um, they can uh, face uh, book you in an instant message. Um, obviously, you're at Michael Skudnik. And then on uh, Instagram, you have an Instagram account as well, right, sir? Uh, I do. Um, I don't know the... <laughs> The link or the code for that one, but I That's am okay. on uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube. Um, you know, I took a break from all my construction videos because now all the construction sites are done, but I should be starting a new uh, construction project pretty soon. So I'll be back to doing my daily videos on basically how to build a house in Southwest Florida. You know, I will tell you, Mike, before I let you go, a quick story. One of my customers from Chicago was Googling something about new construction and came across your video and said, is that a service that the Bartos Group offers? And I'm like, absolutely. I don't know that we can do it at the same level Mike does it, but we can absolutely do it when you're there. So um, you are reaching out through the world, through uh, YouTube and through Facebook on all the cool things that you do. Um, again, it is a pleasure. Thank you so much. And yeah, my pleasure. Oh, thank you. And for really, Mary, um, I'm Mary Bartis with the Bartis Group of Premier Plus Realty, and we look forward to seeing you here in paradise, taking advantage of the rates and the great deals. Ciao.